Buongiorno. Good morning. <coughs> Hence, thank you very much for this. And at the outset, I want to thank the Europark, especially uh, Erika and Carol, who gave us an opportunity to present ourselves in this important meeting. And I confess that it's a very learning process for me. And I really found another important partner for facilitating the implementation of the program of work. Uh, in 2004, which is six years back, uh, 182 countries and the European Commission, the then parties to the Convention on Biological Diversity, made a specific protected area commitments ever made in the history by adapting a program of work on protected areas. We call it as POPA. It's not a really acronym or a synonym, but very simply, we want to call it as a POPA for ease. POPA enshrines development of participatory, ecologically representative, effectively managed national and regional protected area systems. Where necessary, stretches across the national boundaries, integrating with the other land uses and contributing to the human well-being. By emphasizing on the governance, and by recognizing various governance types, by recognizing the management effectiveness evaluation, not only evaluation, but implementing the results of evaluation, and by giving emphasis to the ecological gap analysis, POPA is considered as the framework for the protected areas in the coming decades. Whether it is a Ramsar site, or a UNESCO map biosphere reserve, or a Natura 2000 site, it is a protected area, and POPA provides the framework. Yes. The objective of the program of work is a comprehensive, effectively managed, and ecologically representative national systems of, and regional systems of protected areas. It doesn't talk about the area-based targets that is 10% or 20%, but it talks about a comprehensive and effectively managed and ecologically represented. This objective for the terrestrial areas have to be achieved by 2010 and for the marine protected areas by 2012. And the program of work contains four interlinked program elements which are mutually reinforcing in implementation. Each program element has a specific goal, and each goal has a target, and later we have the activities. Altogether, there are 16 goals, 16 targets, and 92 activities. And each goal, except the goal 16 has a time-bound specific target date by which that goal has to be achieved. So the target ranges from 2005 to 2015. Out of the 15 goals, seven goals have to be achieved by 2008, and six goals have to be achieved by 2010, and one goal, the target date is 2012, and the last goal is 2015. See, by agreeing such a, such a time-bound target indicates that the global community are serious about the conservation and they really want to achieve not only talking. Oh, this is a bit, I think, maybe the program is a, it's a different presentation. It doesn't matter, I will continue. <laughs> <laughs> a thing. Uh, the COP in 2004, while adapting the program, decided to review its implementation in each COP and review its final implementation in 2010. Accordingly, in 2006 and 2008, that is COP8 and COP9, it reviewed its implementation. And we have prepared the in-depth review for the COP10. Out of the 15 goals, the progress is not bad, because I'm quite optimistic. I don't want to say that we have not achieved the goals. The glass is half empty, but the glass is half full. Both convey the same meaning. I say the goals have been partially achieved, not achieved. For example, out of the seven goals for which the target date was 2008, 
that is goal 1.5, goal 3.1, and goal 3.5, and goal 4.1, the progress is fair and the goal is partially achieved. But goals 2.1 and 2.2, that is governance and participation, and achieving the sustainable financing goal 3.4, the progress was not really very good and it is lagging far behind. For the other goals, there is a good some, some progress with considerable systematic efforts collectively by all of us. I am quite confident that we can achieve the goals. If you take the four developed country subregions, the progress in implementation of the program of work was slightly better in Latin America and Caribbean and in Eastern Europe, whereas in Africa, and the Asia Pacific, it is lagging behind. The reason for good progress in Caribbean and the Latin America and the Eastern Europe is because of the participation of many organizations to help the countries in, in implementing the program. For example, in Central and Eastern Europe, Erika, she really managed in the Caucasus region to work with the countries and to WWF the implementation is really far ahead than the other countries. The same the case within, within the Latin America, the major bingos like TNC and the Conservation International help the countries in furthering the implementation. Because the slide was slightly different. Uh, the POPA is one of the most effectively implemented CBD initiators. Because since the program of work came into force in 2004, or the CBD that came into force in 1993, there is 60% increase in protected areas, both in numbers as well as in area. So from the 2004, 27 countries reported establishing more than the 100,000 protected areas, sorry, not 100,000, but it is 6,000 new protected areas covering 120 million hectares. As of now, we have more than 120,000 protected areas covering 13% of the terrestrial area. But for the marine protected areas, it is only 5.4. Since the POPA came into force, about 12 of the terrestrial biomes, out of the 14 terrestrial biomes, the protection is more than 10%. And, and more than 25 countries have completed ecological gap analysis, identifying the, the gaps in their country protected area systems. And about 30% of each country's protected areas, at least now they have a management plan, though this implementation of the plan is not really very high, but there is a plan about 30% of the protected areas. Then POPA really triggered the regional challenges. For example, the Micronesian challenge, where the countries like the FSM, Federation of States of Micronesia, Palau, Marshall Island came together and established the Micronesian challenge. The dynamic countries, in last COP meeting, they have adapted the dynamic big win and the Caucasus are the, <laughs> the Carpathians are the uh, Caribbean challenge. So these regional challenges, they catalyze the political will and trigger the action at the national level and secure funding. So such regional challenges is really very important uh, to enhance the implementation. In addition, Popa really created awareness about the many values and the benefits. Hans told that, that investment in the nature is the key message that what the team has given. And in addition to the biodiversity conservation, protected areas, they are the lifeline for the planet. The many, the social, economic, and ecological benefits and conveying those benefits in the monetary terms is very important for making a convincing case for the policy makers and the politicians. And POPA really triggered for making such an economic argument for making the protected areas. Uh, the many publications 